very much for joining us today. Um, a big day, uh, and, and unfortunately it's a day that I think we could have had an improved discussion and dialogue about Wisconsin's priorities. Uh, we are, um, yesterday the notice went out that the budget, we'd be on the floor with the budget today. Um, the fact that we had about a month stalled uh, time period and then it was uh, wait, 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 and then hurry up. I can see why uh, they wanna quickly get this out. This is a bad, harmful budget for Wisconsin. This is a budget where Wisconsin is home to almost 6 million people and this budget was carefully crafted for one person who happens to be running for president. Uh, this is a budget that does not reflect uh, the hundreds of people, thousands of people who have contacted constituents who came and testified before joint finance about their concerns about what this will mean to harm their schools, what this does to harm the University of Wisconsin, what this does to harm uh, um, access to health care in this state. And we have said over and over and over that there is a democratic difference. And, and what we would be doing had we had the opportunity uh, to really be engaged in this budget and in these discussions to look at how we can deal with the self-inflicted $2.2 .2 billion deficit that the Republicans have put upon themselves. We are seeing how they have overplayed their hand. We have seen how they have grossly underestimated the tolerance uh, by um, Wisconsinites about their shenanigans that, they, that happen late at night. We are seeing that play out over this weekend. We will see it play out as uh, this week as the Assembly and the Senate take up the budget. It has been months and months, a season of poor headlines for Republicans. It has been a season of poor job performance numbers where Wisconsin is 50th in small business uh, startups. Uh, we still have lagging wages in this state, and this budget does nothing to invest in Wisconsin's best resource, and that is in its people. Uh, we are looking at the, under the last four years of majority party control, we've gone backwards. Uh, state spending is up more than $10 billion, yet funding for our schools is down more than $200 per student. UW funding has been slashed by over $500 million. The UW system is our idea engine in this state. Uh, Wisconsin's job creation ranking is down. Family wages are down. This is not a budget, and we will talk about um, what we would be doing and that what we need to be doing differently in this state to, again, get our schools moving in the right direction, help people who are um, experiencing economic anxiety because of um, job opportunities and uncertainty. <coughs> we're going to be talking about what we should be doing for health care for our most vulnerable here in this, in this state. And time and time again, we've been rebuffed. I am proud of the work that our finance committee members have done on this budget, pointing out in um, fierce defense of Wisconsin's communities and as our state as a whole in order to thrive because this really is a tale of two states as we look at Minnesota and how they are thriving and how Wisconsin, uh, we have gone in a very different direction and because of different choices that were made that are unfortunate, that are a lot of missed opportunities in Wisconsin for our state uh, to join our neighboring states in an economic recovery. With that, I'll turn it over to our finance members as well and thank both Senator Taylor and Senator Erpenbach and their staff for their hard work on finance and really the, the disappointing end to the budget um, budget activity in the Finance Committee. John? Well, finance uh, was a lot of fun. Um, I learned a lot. Uh, I think the biggest takeaway I have with finance, whether you're dealing with our K-12 situation, our UW situation, um, our, our social programs that we have out there like IRIS and and so on is couple that with items that are in the 999 motion and they are just absolutely corrupted by power if you take a look at what's been going on in the budget um we'll talk about the open record stuff in a minute the changes to the retirement system very troubling obviously the open record's very troubling and they have not, they have not said that word for word it's all coming out yet and that's what we are waiting on we want word for word all of it to come out of the budget. Um, every single thing that cut actually is cutting our economy. Whether it's the UW system by $250 million. You know, there's a company in my district that started essentially on campus uh, back in the 70s called Epic. Everybody should have an Epic in their Senate district. They are booming. Dane County is doing well because Dane County invests 
in the people here, but when you cut the economic engine of the state by $250 million, that's bad. When you delay transportation projects, and in some cases major transportation projects, that's jobs that will be gone. When you insert prevailing wage, that actually drives down wages. They admit that. It drives down wages and some people will be out of jobs. They're not doing anything to help the economy. Absolutely nothing. As Jen said, and she's absolutely right, Governor Walker introduced this budget early. Finance took it up early because he's running for president, not because he has a responsibility to five and a half million people here in Wisconsin to put forward the best budget he thinks he possibly can. He borrowed $1.3 billion for roads. He ignored major problems that we have here in the state of Wisconsin because he has a timeline. And right now it's all about Scott Walker, and it's not about the rest of us who live here in Wisconsin. So uh, we will offer up really good changes, we think, on the floor today. We will offer up and, and, and provide sound arguments why these changes need to be made. It's not for the betterment of the Democratic Party of Wisconsin, it's for the better, betterment of everybody in this state. We all have to live here, we all have to get along as best as we possibly can, but this budget process and the absolute corruption because of the amount of power that's put in there, just the warped sense of the fact that they could even think they could try to change our open records laws and then turn around 48 hours later and say, well, no, not really, we didn't mean that, is ridiculous. They tried. And that, that should tell you exactly where their heads are at right now. And believe me, there's no coincidence, last thing I'll say, there's no coincidence that on the day that the governor files to run for president, about six hours later, we're taking away open records laws here in the state of Wisconsin. There is a direct connection there, a direct connection. Well, the first thing I want to say is thank you. Because of you, the media, we were able to, at the very least, make them pause on the issue of open records. The concept, the values that are Wisconsin's values. That's what we're talking about. That's what we've been talking about in the course of this budget, and that's what we're concerned about. Um, no question that the open, the open records uh, issue was an extreme, <laughs> Um, power grab. And I think that this budget has been about power grabs across, across the way, whether it's local government, whether it's the demolishing of, you know, uh, county boards being able to have power, whether it is changing uh, access to public education. Uh, the, the power grabs are over and over and over and over. And um, I think the largest concerning issue is education. The value of education has always been something, no matter if we were in our worst economic times in Wisconsin, we've always invested in our people. Not investing in our kids and not investing in our UW system not only makes for no jobs and low wages and individuals not necessarily prepared for the workforce of today or for tomorrow. This is really not making the investment so that we're prepared for the future. This governor, did what is always his way. He does a budget that's extreme, and he leaves it to the legislature to be able to chisel out uh, what needs to happen for the people, except our colleagues didn't do it. What we have in front of us is a budget that is wrong for Wisconsin, not only on education, not only on jobs, but on services. What we did to Iris and family care, to our seniors, and to people with disabilities, children with special eds, I'm concerned about those populations and what happened in this budget. We're gonna stand up today and we're gonna make it a point to continue to say what they've done so that Wisconsin can see the cover pulled off. That's what we're gonna be doing today. That's what we've tried to do throughout this entire budget. And uh, I'm hoping that people will see that the lack of inclusion that they've also done is a huge problem. And what do I mean by that? Every time someone disagreed, there seemed to be some penalty to that, i.e., they didn't like what the scientists did, they took away the scientists for the DNR. At the cost of what? Our environment. That's a huge Wisconsin value. Tourism, so connected to our environment. We hope that the same lack of inclusion that we saw in the uh, arena deal will you know, change and that they will include us in those conversations. We're going to stand up. We're going to continue to stand up. That's what the Democrats have been doing, and that's what we hope to get Wisconsinites to hear and see, that they've gone way too far. The pendulum has swung way too far. John, you said it the other day. You said you were, wait, you were wondering when that moment was going to come. Yeah, where the line was. Where the line was. Yeah. We found out Thursday.
today? We have several. We are working still on our package. Our <clears throat> caucus uh, met yesterday. Uh, we will continue to meet today, and um, I am pleased with the work. It's, we're going to be respectful of uh, the institution, um, but we have um, several that we will be putting forward. So several means? 847. No. Um, less than 46. Yeah, we're still affirming it all. Less than 999. <laughs> In many ways. Have you seen any of the language of the amendments they expect to no, offer no. on open records, on prevailing wage? No, and, and <clears throat> on open records specifically. They have not come out and said we will remove all of the language that was put in the budget on Thursday night, and that's something we are keeping a very close eye on. Um, all of it has to come out. That includes CCAP, John? Right. The CCAP on the open record? No, the, the CCAP, no, CCAP is, the CCAP open is different than the open records they, issue. They talked about that one as well. Is that to come out? You guys are okay with that provision? Did they talk about that too? I didn't Long hear anyone. Oh, I didn't hear them. I didn't it. hear anything okay. about what they said in that regard. The open records is uh, <clears throat> taking away open government. What we're talking about on whether or not an individual has a dismissal, I would argue, is completely different than whether or not you know what happens in your government and whether or not there should be able to be a sense of secrecy and no accountability. I think those are two completely different things. But I can understand why they want to divert you from the real conversation of whether or not you should have transparency in government. Yeah, we're looking at, it was, was it constant. items 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, or 28 through 31, or 32, so those items. What about the police <coughs> deaths and those investigative reports now being subject to the balancing test? Do you want that language removed as well? Candidly, I, I think that there is some concern of whether or not it goes too far. I think that there needs to be um, a closer look at that. Um, it, you know, it was thrown in, and you know, you want to believe that the intentions are good, but if in the end what it does is it puts a cloud of secrecy in that situation, you don't want that either. I think that's the whole point of why we did the legislation to try to make sure that um, we could heal um, situations <clears throat> where the community needs to feel like things were done appropriate. And if you don't allow for access, then um, that lack of transparency makes or feeds distrust. Are you going to ask to remove the retirement system mm -hmm. language? Yes. You know, and we, we have a job to do to represent Wisconsin uh, and Wisconsin residents. And the Republican majority, they have failed in that task. And what we want to do is we want to invest in our people. We want to build up stronger schools, stronger communities. We want a budget that puts Wisconsin's families first that deal with uh, wages, that, that deal with access to to health care and, and child care and, and workplace flexibilities, opportunities to be creative to look at um, the new economy and forward thinking ways that we can look at pro growth initiatives for businesses to survive in the state and to, to grow in the state. Week after week after week, we heard of bad news coming out of the Finance Committee uh, by the majority party. We heard of bad headlines across the state about economic numbers in the state. And we just think that they have um, really taken their eye off the ball about what is important to Wisconsin. And that is because they are looking at doing the governor's bidding on these things for a presidential run. And they are selling out Wisconsin families, communities, and our values and priorities at the um, because of this presidential bid for the governor. And we can do better in this state. We have um, seen deep cuts, historic cuts to education. We have seen tax breaks. Those are their priorities, unfortunately. I don't think those are the priorities of, um, of, of many uh, people that we represent, the people that took time out of their day to wait <clears throat> for hours and hours to have two or three minutes to plead their case before the finance committee members. Um, unfortunately, many of the pleas of Wisconsinites have fallen on deaf ears. Do you guys support the box deal as it is, or do you demand changes before you have to support it? We are, today is the budget day, and I think um, the majority party, um, they are, they don't have They've their head around this. Do. They've got work to do on that one. Their hands are full on that one. I think it was insulting to say that you're having an informational hearing and the entity upon which you're putting the most burden on was not invited to the hearing, um, that they were in the room, not invited to the table. And uh, in addition to that, when you uh, don't even have information about what their financial situation is and what the burden of getting additional facilities that have financial burdens will have on them. 
I think that alone is challenging, and that's not the issue of the day. The issue of the day is the budget that is wrong for Wisconsin. The issue of the day is a budget that has completely and utterly carved out the inclusion of its people and really it, it, concern, it really feels like, for the people. A budget that puts our wages down and really does not protect workers. And the concept of making sure that people just want to be able to get to the American dream and work a job and have access, access to health care and access for their kids to be able to go to school. It's a budget that doesn't remember that originally the governor said that jobs was his number one concern. What did he say? He was going to focus like a laser. I'm not certain what that laser is focused on other than a presidential campaign it looks like now and not what is good for the people of Wisconsin. That's okay. what we want to talk about today. We've got to get you guys to the floor. So. Oh. All right. You guys Thank Any you. Other? Any questions? Mm -hmm. Senator Taylor, real quick. How's the MPS piece inside this budget impact um, your support for the bus ran going forward in the second Well, I'll say this. My position on the um, MPS um, takeover, as people have called it, is that it does not do anything to really help um, those children who have been identified as in crisis. Uh, in particular, three schools at a time will not do anything. Giving a commissioner control over the buildings and over the superintendent um, is not, I think, productive. I think it creates division. We'd like to see it out. It's not necessarily connected at all to the arena. It's connected to we should do what's right. It's connected to we should do what's right for education. And Thanks, voting control. Thank you. I know. <laughs> 